four-foot tusk like a walrus, as well as other pointed sharp teeth about the size of his finger. I showed him a plesiosaur. He said, well, that's close, but it's not exactly like that. He said the neck that he saw was two-foot diameter, and the eyes were eight to nine-inch diameter. Hmm. He said they were six miles south of Cape Sable Island, Nova Scotia. The water was 180 feet deep and flat cam. They say calm, cam, flat cam. I said, what do you mean flat cam? You know, flat cam, no waves. Oh, you mean calm. Okay. Now, he said, I don't want to see it again. That's what he told me. The other three guys refused to even talk to me. They said, look, we got laughed at enough. We're not even going to talk about it. This thing washed up on the beach in uh, Newfoundland, Canada, about two years ago. Nobody ever identified it, a giant creature of some kind. Another one came up in Parker's Cove, Canada, this thing. I had a guy who came to my house and spent two hours talking to me. He said, Real Hovind, I was vacationing up there. He said, I've got a uh, uh, bed and breakfast right near there. He said, this thing washed up on the beach. I got a whole article of him talking to me, September 18th, 2002. He said, I went over to Parker's Cove, two hours drive, saw this creature laying on the beach. He said, some of the scientists said it was a basking shark. Other people said, no, it's not a basking shark. You know, typical argument. All they knew was it stunk. Everybody kept cutting pieces off of it to take, have a piece of the sea monster to take home. But there were articles in the paper about this giant creature, whatever it was. I don't think it was ever positively identified, except some folks think it was a sea monster. Some folks think it was a basking shark. I don't know. But it's gone now. There are a couple of samples, though, that uh, people up in Canada still have. I think it would be worth getting those analyzed uh, scientifically to get the structure of it. It had a little hair on it. I don't know of any sharks that have little hairs, unless that is frayed protein, which it could be, but it appears to be some type of hair or fur, whatever it is. Many people reported this creature as having a hair or fur on it. And there's all the pictures you can see for yourself what it is. We've got all kinds of books out there on the table or on my website, Dr. Dino, about uh, dinosaurs living with people. I interviewed Jacques Boivet right here for three hours. We talked and talked and talked because he's been collecting for years sightings of the Lake Memphremagog monster which is between New York, I mean between uh, Vermont and Quebec, Canada. He has file after file of stories of people who claim they've seen Memphrey. In 1992, just that one year alone, there were eight sightings involving 26 people, just in that one year. There have been reports of some kind of strange creature in the Potomac River. They say it resembles the Loch Ness Monster. This one lady said her husband shot one of the smaller monsters in the neck. It rose out of the water and disappeared took off down underwater again. In 1800s, there were many reported sightings of a sea monster in Boston. Lots of people saw this thing, like a giant sea snake. There's an island off the coast of Rhode Island. The island is called Block Island. In 1994, I've got lots of material on this one, um, 1996, a creature was caught there, 14 feet long. Here's the sketch, here's, here's the actual picture of it right here. Somebody stole the bones and it disappeared. Nobody knows where it is now. But, of course, they called it the Block Ness Monster, you know, Block Island. In Lake Erie, there's been lots of people claim they've seen a creature in Lake Erie. Erie's Bessie matches Nessie, this article says. They describe it as black, 35 feet long, with a snake-like head. There are many articles in the paper and many folks who will swear they've seen the Lake Erie Monster. We could spend two days on that one also. I, I talked to John Kraft, who photographed Lake Erie Monster. He said, Brother Hovind, I saw this critter with its head sticking out of the water. By the time I got my camera set up, the head was down. All I got was the back. Sorry. But that's the best picture I've got, he said. I talked to Pete Peterson, who owns a bait shop on Lake Erie. He's also a taxidermist. He said he was walking along the shore of the beach, and he saw this carcass, and the, buzzard, or the seagulls were picking it apart. So he shooed off the gulls and got this critter, critter and took it home and stuffed it. He's a taxidermist. He said, I don't know what it is. Sure looks strange, doesn't it? I said, yes, sir, that looks strange. It's in a museum in Texas now. It's never been positively identified. In Situate Harbor, Massachusetts, I went there and interviewed the sheriff who was the first man on the scene when back in 1970, this thing washed up on the beach. He said, people, a rock, roll, rock and roll music station came on at 3 in the morning and announced there's a sea monster laying on the beach and people came for miles, plugged up this little bitty town's highway system and everybody started cutting off chunks of the sea monster. He said, Brother Hoven, I saw it before it got cut up. He said, I'm telling you, that was some kind of long neck sea monster. He said, I don't know what it was. Other people said it's a basking shark. That's always their answer, basking shark. It's, you know, standard way to explain it. Could have been, but he said, I saw it before it got cut up, and it wasn't a shark of any kind, not a basking shark. In California, 1925, this critter washed up on the beach. 
There's the head right there. There's his eyeball. The neck comes down to the right here. This guy behind him has a rifle just in case it moves again. <laughs> the neck was 20 feet long. The book uh, Shipwrecks and Sea Monsters out there on the table or on my website has all these pictures in there. 20 foot neck. I had one atheist wrote me a letter and said, Hoven, you're so stupid. Don't you know that was a whale? I wrote back and said, just exactly where is the neck on a whale? <laughs> Ought to be between the front flippers and the head, don't you think? <laughs> it's not a whale. Uh, duh. One guy said it's a, it's a bard's whale, a rare form of bard's beaked whale. Well, there's a bard's beaked whale right there. This thing had a 20-foot neck. I'm sorry, you're mistaken, okay? It was a new creature. The people who claimed, they, who saw it and examined it said it was a plesiosaurus. If that bothers you, tough. That's what they said. The only reason it bothers some people, though, is because they've already got a preconceived theory that they like. They like the evolution theory because it gets rid of God. It's a wonderful way to leave God out of the picture. Back in the 1930s and 40s, Monterey was famous for having the famous, uh, world's famous sardine fleet. They'd go out there and catch sardines by the gazillions and sell them all over the world. And many folks in the sardine fleet reported sighting creatures like this. One crew said it surfaced right near their boat and stared at the crew with large, baleful eyes from a rounded head that topped a long, slender neck. Notice the shape of the head is shaped like a light bulb. We're going to see that again in a minute. A bulb-shaped head on top of a long neck. There's a book called uh, Mysterious Sea Monsters of California's Central Coast you can get from our website. In 1969, fishermen nearly dropped their rods when they were fishing off one of the bridges in New York City when the New York Harbor Patrol chased this creature, bigger than a whale, upriver past one of the largest cities in the world. Couldn't catch it. They didn't know what it was. There are many stories of basilosauruses still alive today. In White River, Arkansas, Newport, Arkansas, there were many folks in the 1970s who reported seeing the White River Monster. There were so many reported sightings that Arkansas the Senate passed a, uh, they designated the White River Monster Sanctuary, passed a resolution. It's unlawful to molest, kill, trample, or harm the White River Monster, 1973. I talked to Cloyce Warren, who took that photograph. I said, Cloyce, what was it? He said, Mr. Hovind, honestly, I don't know. He said, I had a whole bunch of pictures from the last roll of film I took. He said, I took them all into the newspaper there in Newport, Arkansas, and said, here, you've been laughing at us for claiming there's a monster in the river. By the way, the river there is 100 feet deep. I said, here's a roll of film. I haven't even opened it. You guys develop it, and you'll see the pictures are right on there. Well, the guy at the newspaper didn't realize it was color film and developed it with black and white developer. Ruined the whole roll. So Cloyce went out and got one or two more pictures. He said, they're not near as good as the other ones I had. I'm sorry. In 1972, I believe, there was a flood that filled in much of the river. These pictures were taken in 71. Arkansas Senate passed a resolution in 73, a couple years later, to protect the White River Monster. Off the coast of Jupiter, Florida, there have been many reported sightings of creatures there. One guy wrote me this letter. He said, Dr. Hoven, during the 50s, I was flying off Jupiter, Florida, where I lived. I was seven or eight miles out over the Gulf. The water was glass calm. Suddenly, I saw an animal. Its head came out of the water. Its eye stayed trained on me as I made another pass. It appeared to be 30 plus feet long. Having seen the creature taken by the Japanese fishing boat, and later the drawing of the National, the National Enquirer, I, could say that I would say this is the same creature. I didn't tell anybody for fear they would think I was nuts. I was working for Pratt & Whitney Aircraft Company with high security. Later my brother and I caught a pygmy sperm whale for the Miami Sea Aquarium, Captain Gray. I hope this will further support your belief. I get letters and calls and phone emails like this just about every week. I've got huge files of people who claim they have seen something that appears to be a dinosaur in this century. There's a big lake between New York and Vermont called Lake Champlain. Many folks claim they've seen the Lake Champlain monster. I talked to Sandy Mancy that took this picture. I said, Sandy, do you think you saw a dinosaur? She said, oh no, I know I saw a dinosaur. She and her husband and two kids watched it for 10 minutes. We'll put at the end of this tape her interview that I did with her describing the creature she saw, a plesiosaurus. Fifty-eight people in Lake Champlain saw what appeared to be a creature 30 to 35 feet long swimming off the port side of the boat 200 feet away. They saw it for five minutes. The skipper said, don't tell me it's a fish. If it was, it weighed three or 5,000 pounds. Discover Magazine ran that article. There are stories in the Bible of dragons in the sea. Hmm. 
the dragon in the sea, mentioned in Isaiah 27. In Pensacola, Florida, where I live, back in 1963,